Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Michael's Church New Haven this morning, the Sunday next before Lent. As we come into God's presence to share in our worship this morning, let's be quiet for a moment. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the timeless gift of your Son, Jesus. Please guide us by your Holy Spirit in our response to him during this time before Lent. Thank you for your message of love and hope and salvation in him. Draw us close to you and to one another through this act of worship. We ask it in his name. Amen. And now we will have our first hymn, which you'll find on the description page of the YouTube video. Our opening prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of, our Holy, of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen, Lord, have mercy. So in a moment's silence, let's be quiet to bring to mind the things we need to confess before God, to receive his forgiveness, things that we regret and are ashamed of. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins together in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and upon me. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven sinners, let's declare the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
the collect for the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to hear the reading for today, followed by the sermon from Bishop Bill. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sermon for St Michael's on Sunday the 14th of February 2021, the Sunday before the beginning of Lent. This sermon is based on the Gospel reading, Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Father, help us as we enter in upon this mountaintop experience to discern what is going on there and to find ourselves there also with you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, my apologies to those who, uh, like my wife, don't appreciate my sense of humour. But I want to bring you this small joke called Rope Talk. A rope walks into a bar. The bartender points at him and says, Hey, we don't serve your kind around here. Get out. The rope calmly exits the building, twists himself up, parts his hair and goes back inside a few minutes later. The bartender sees him again and asks angrily, Aren't you that rope I just kicked out? No, sir. The rope replies, I'm afraid not. Anyway, three ropes from heaven. One helpful way to understand Mark's fast-moving gospel is to see it as a storyline that is hung down from heaven on three ropes. Three special moments of revelation are described. Jesus' baptism, Chapter 1, verses 9 to 20. Jesus' transfiguration, chapter 9, verses 2 to 13. And Jesus' crucifixion, chapter 15, verses 33 to 38. We know that Mark is deliberately linking these three moments of revelation because he includes the same four elements in each of the moments. There is some kind of heavenly portent, there is a voice speaking, there is an identification of Jesus as Son of God, and there is a reference to Elijah. And we met those four elements in today's reading about Jesus' transfiguration, didn't we? 
a heavenly portent. Jesus's garments turn white and the cloud descends. A voice. Well, a voice comes from the cloud. The identification of Jesus as son of God. The voice says, this is my son whom I love. And a reference to Elijah. Elijah the prophet appears here in conversation with Moses and Jesus. The transfiguration constitutes the middle strand of rope in Mark's account. The event is like a pivot in the story of Jesus' life. By this point, we have heard about the miracles, the disciples, the crowds, even the raising of the dead. Peter has just exclaimed in chapter 8, verse 29, just exclaimed on everyone's behalf, you are the Christ. Now, six days later, Jesus links Peter's incredible declaration with something unthinkable. Peter has said, you are the Jewish hope. You are Messiah. Jesus is now going to say in reply, yes, that is true. And I have to die. He says it with his lips in chapter 8, verses 31 to 32. And of course, Peter and the others cannot believe him. Up on the Mount of Transfiguration, it is said again in a very dramatic way. On the Mount of Transfiguration, the three disciples get an in awe-inspiring glimpse of who Jesus really is. He is divine. He is so holy, so pure, so divine that from inside out, even his clothes become dazzling white, whiter than any human being could ever bleach them. The disciples get a spine-tingling glimpse into the kind of people Jesus can have a conversation with. The great prophet of God, Elijah, and the great liberator and lawgiver himself, Moses. The best the disciples can come up with as their knees shake is to try and show some appropriate respect. How about a monument or two or three to commemorate the moment? Is that what they should be doing? The voice from heaven interrupts them. Be quiet. Listen to my son. The son is chatting with Elijah and Moses. People who have had dealings with death and evidently come out the other side. That is what this pageant declares. Don't tell anyone about this, Jesus instructs his disciples on their way down the mountain, until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. Verse 9. The drama, the conversations are all about dealing with death. The voice has commanded the disciples to listen to the beloved Son. And what is the beloved Son talking about? rising from the dead. As Jesus and his friends descend the mountain, we descend with them into the second half of the Gospel of Mark. Difficult events lie ahead. We are going to learn that out of the cross, the law of prophet Moses will get written on human hearts. We are going to learn that out of the resurrection, the spirit who inspired Elijah will become the inspirer of all followers of Jesus. Via cross and resurrection, that is 
God's way. Meanwhile, today, we pause for a moment on the mountain top with Jesus and Peter, James and John. There is something very intimate going on. First of all, in Jesus' picking out three of his friends to join him in rock climbing. Up they go together. Jesus figures that these three confessors are ready for what is going to happen at the top of the high mountain. He believes in them. And at the top of the mountain, what is going to happen? God the Father is going to speak to them directly. The voice from the cloud is not going to be a private voice, as it was at the time of Jesus' baptism, where it addressed him alone. That's Mark chapter 1, verse 11. The voice of God on the top of this mountain will be for the disciples' ears. Somehow, these three earthly friends of Jesus are to get a taste of what Moses and Elijah each experienced in their lives, hearing from God. So when Jesus invites you and me to go rock climbing, we need to go with him. He believes we are ready for it. The essential intimacy on the mountain top is, of course, that between father and son. Hilary and I get plenty of video clips and now Zoom sessions with our grandchildren singing or showing us their certificates of achievement from school or university and so on. The grandchildren's parents are so proud as we say wow over what their kids have done. The father's voice from the cloud here is saying wow. This is my kid. This is my beloved. I'm so proud of him. Catch his perspective on life and you'll be okay. This is a disclosure moment. Jesus illuminated from inside out. Voice from heaven. My son, the beloved. Suitable companions in Moses and Elijah. Yes, it has to be kept secret for the moment, but this is a glimpse with which everyone can dare to proceed into the difficult days lying ahead at the bottom of the mountain. So enjoy the intimate moments with God, even though you may be terrified like Peter in the event itself. The transfigured Jesus is not supposed to be figured out, fitted into our ideas of how the relationship is supposed to go, frozen in time. He is rather to be appreciated, worshipped, listened to. It is for us to be drawn to his light, to know him afresh, to commit to walking with him, even to and through death. Are we ready and willing for that? Father, thank you for this amazing fulcrum point in Mark's telling of the life and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. Here, discovered and revealed, revealed and discovered as Messiah on your terms, not human or Jewish terms. And friends of his recruited into renewing their allegiance to him for the second half of his human journey of ministry towards a cross in Jerusalem. 
across that word end in resurrection. Help us to be contemporary companions of your son as we walk with him in his way in the midst of all that speaks of the human, of the temporary, even of the sad seeming finality of dying and death. Convinced from inside out that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead the first fruits of those who rise from the dead is alive, will carry us with him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you so much, Bill, for your sermon. And now in response to the sermon and leading into our prayers, our next hymn can be found on the YouTube page. Let us pray. After a week of ice and snow flurries, when the biting wind made going out difficult, when isolation in our bubbles seem tighter. We thank God for what we have. Shelter, clothes, hot drinks, meals, and means of communication with persons near and far. We thank God for our church here in New Haven, where we worship in our own homes, remembering, especially at the peace, those we would greet in person. We pray for our Rector Martin, who puts so much thought and prayer into supporting his parish in these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peoples of the world, especially for the citizens of Myanmar, as democracy is denied them. We pray for all nations struggling in different degrees in getting on top of the COVID pandemic. We ask that the leaders of richer nations might remember that the, the pandemic is a world problem which will not be solved until all countries have mastered it. We pray for our leaders, both nationally and locally, struggling to balance the books in an unbalanced situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank God for the devotion of all NHS staff, for the scientists who provided a vaccine, and for that army of people arranging and giving the vaccination. We pray for all who are sick at this time and in a quiet moment bring to God those we know who are sick. So many have died in this pandemic, so we ask God to wrap his arms around those who mourn and in silence we remember those we knew who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A photograph on Facebook is not as good as that person standing in front of you. A meeting on Zoom is not as good as a hug. But in these lockdown times, we need family and friends. In a quiet moment, we pray for our families. We pray for our friends.
we thank God for always being there for us and listening to our worries. And in a moment of quiet, we pray for ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to the peace, let's take a moment to think of those in the church family with whom we would normally be sharing the peace and bring them to mind. Let's also remember other loved ones and our whole community in this peace that we share in Christ, though we are temporarily separated by our current circumstances. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Now leading into our communion, please would you go to the next song on the YouTube page. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout this town, this country and this world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So I invite you to join in the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break 
<clears throat> this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And now I will take the bread and wine on behalf of myself and our whole community. The body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at this table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Let us go in joy and in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please would you watch to the end of the video and then find the final song on the YouTube page.